You want to buy a milking cow, but you're not really sure what to look for, or what to feed them, or even how this whole thing works. And I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about that today. All that. Okay, friends. We are kicking off the milking cow series. Apparently my chair is squeaky. I was gonna do this video in the barn. The other two are in the barn. Barn. But my baby is sleeping and the big kids are with cousins. So I'm sitting here at my desk and we're gonna do the first part here. And that's just gonna be the way it's gonna go. We're gonna start off right away with cow breeds and kind of the basic logistics. So there is beef cow breeds and there is dairy cow breeds and there is dual purpose breeds. Milking a beef cow, you can milk any cow, but will you get decent production? Probably not. So we're not going to talk about milking beef cows, although some people milk crosses. That's possible too. The most common dairy breeds are Holstein and Jersey cow. Then you get Guernsey, Ashar, Ashar. I've obviously never seen one. Um, our cows cross with the Montebilliard, which is another milking breed that's uncommon. There's a decent amount of milking breeds, but for the most part, if you're looking at a milking cow, you're probably looking at a Jersey, Holstein, or a Guernsey. There's milking shorthorn, there's all sorts of breeds. We're not gonna get into all the breeds today, we're just going to get into Jersey, Guernsey, Holstein. There's a song called Cows Around by Corb Lund, I'm gonna link it below. In the song he goes, Jersey, Guernsey, Jersey, Guernsey, Holstein, hey! So that's every time I say Jersey, Guernsey, Holstein, Guernsey, Holstein, I think, hey! Okay. Holsteins are the most common milk cow. They are high producing, but they don't have a lot of fat. Their cream line is not amazing. So lots of people have Holsteins for a family milk cow, but if you're really wanting to make your own butter and cheese, you're probably gonna be looking at a Jersey or a Guernsey. Where I live, Guernseys are basically non-existent. Jerseys are way more available. So, a cow, so you have a calf, and a heifer is a female unbred cow, or not unbred, cow who hasn't had a calf. So your heifer gets bred, when she calves, she comes into milk. The dairy standard average is that once she's about three months into her lactation, or three months fresh, called freshening when they calve. When is a cow freshen or calf, but freshening is to do with milk cows mostly. Three months in is when they're gonna start cycling again on average and you're gonna breed them back via bull or artificial insemination and then they're gonna calve again a year later. So two months before they're due to calve, you dry them up you have your two month dry period. There's differences in opinion. Um, big dairy farms are like making that really small, but two months is a standard decent dry period. Then your cow calves, she freshens and you go back in the cycle. Dairy bulls are the meanest bulls there are. Marius always says that the reason there is no dairy bulls in a rodeo is because they don't just want to buck that person off, they also want to kill them. Most dairy farmers don't have a bull because of this. Dairy bulls are notoriously mean. Where we live, most of the dairy farmers who are Holstein farmers don't have dairy bulls at all. They do AI. But we have one Jersey dairy farm and they keep bulls and he buys bulls from this one farmer 
Apparently it's this woman that raises bulls and she just raises the best bulls. Respectful, easy to handle, chill bulls. We're actually gonna be bringing one of them here soon, potentially, if Annabelle didn't take what we brought. We brought her to their farm in November and she's getting preg checked January 14th, so maybe you, maybe it's already been January 14th, maybe it isn't January 14th, I don't know when this video is gonna be posted, but January 14th, she's getting preg checked. If she's not took, if she's open, meaning not bred, she's, we're gonna bring the bull back because she will be going into heat the next week, will be the projected heat. So a cow cycle is 21 days long, and they go into heat on day 21 or day one, depending on, or estrus, the period of time in which a cow can take to be bred is 18 hours. I know, right? No wonder it can be so hard to get them bred. There is um, a shot that you can give them. I think it's called Lutalase. And if you roughly know when their cycle is in the second half of their cycle, you can give them a shot of Lutalase. It speeds up the formation of the egg, drops the eggs three days after you give Lutalase. So you know you give Lutalase. Three days later, you can AI them. That 18 hours is called standing heat. In standing heat, it's called this because a cow will be will stand to be mounted. So cows mount each other all the time and it doesn't really mean a lot unless, but they usually like, you know, one mounts the other and it walks away and like, you know, they just walk away. If a cow is standing to be mounted, she's in standing heat. Other signs of standing heat, um, are clear like a raw egg white mucus from her hind end. Uh, they're often crankier, their milk production can dip. Um, when they pee, they'll then hold their, like if their tail's normally like this, they hold it up to pee and then they'll kind of like hold it half cocked because it's kind of showing that they're receptive to be bred. One of the many things. Um, the dog just let herself in and that really startled me. I'm gonna go close the door. So you are really wanting a milk cow but right now the problem is your husband he says no and you're trying to convince him and you think it's a really good idea and he thinks it's really not a good idea don't do it without the support of your husband I know that maybe sounds silly but you can't be the only milker if you are the only one milking it's not sustainable and you're gonna burn out. When we first had milking cows, so we've had milking cows on and off for 10 years. We've had five different milk cows. Pepper, hey dog, I see you sniffing that counter. Um, when we first had cows, Marius milked. We milked twice a day, I milked once, he milked once. Even when we milked once a day, we took turns. Um, when I said I wanted to get a milk cow again, so we didn't have a milk cow for almost five years. When I said I wanted to get one again, he said, okay, but I'm not milking. He said, my work schedule does not allow that time in my day. I work long hours. I'm not getting up early to milk before work. So it took me a long time to be willing to get a milk cow knowing that he wouldn't milk. And he encouraged it. He said, you're welcome to get a milk cow. I'll help with whatever I can, but I'm not milking. But my sister milks. So she milks once or twice a week. If I'm sick, she can milk. If I wanna go away for a night, she can milk. Who's, I don't go anywhere, whatever. Anyways, I have help. If you are the only one who can milk, seriously think about whether it is sustainable for you to milk. We're gonna talk about machine milking versus hand milking in the next video, but Hand milking is a skill that takes a lot to learn. You can't just jump in and begin hand milking. It would take you four or five days of milking to seriously figure it out. And in which point, if you weren't doing a good job, the cow could get mastitis. If you machine milk, it's more a matter of the person just knowing how to use a machine and knowing how to handle cows and they can probably milk your cow just fine one time milking with you and they're fine. So if you want to have a lot of other people milking your cow or you want to go away and have someone else milk your cow, 
Machine milking is more flexible that way. Hand milking is very intimate. Um, our cow is very particular about who milks her and who is there at milking time. So just be aware of that when you're choosing hand milking versus machine milking. What is your support system like? Who is milking? All that sort of thing. So in our neck of the woods, to buy a milk cow, you're looking at $1,500 to $3,000. That's your average. I'm in Canada. Um, $2,000 Canadian is roughly $1,400, $1,500 US dollars. A friend of mine in North Carolina told me that $1,200 to $1,600 US dollars is average for them. So here, $1,500 would probably get you either an older cow or a not bred cow or a really young cow who wasn't bred, that sort of thing. $3,000 would be your first or second lactation, great cow, she's bred, she's a great producer, all these things. Keep in mind that a dairy farm, their idea of a low producer is probably your idea of a high producer if you're a f just looking for a family milk cow. Other than buying the cow, what do you have for shelter? Do you need to build a shelter? You don't need anything fancy. You do need somewhere kind of dry and out of the wind and rain and snow and all that to milk. That is a very nice thing. You don't need a fancy barn. That's not necessary. How are you going to water this cow? That is another important thing. Do you live where it's winter? What are your logistics for watering in winter? What about hay? Is hay expensive where you live? Is hay, um, like, is it easy to come by? Are you gonna have to really struggle to find good hay? Or do you even have to feed very much hay? I have friends in Texas who count on like one or two months a year of feeding hay. We count on 200 days a year of feeding hay. That's a lot of days of feeding hay. If you wanna buy a milking, milking machine, you're looking at about $1,000. For me, all I needed was a new bucket. $50, I bought a new stainless steel bucket. So depending on what you need to build and all that is where your expenses are going to be. Now, the day has come when you get to shop for a cow. You have been looking forward to this day you get to go sh cow shopping and I bet you, you've already been browsing ads. You've been looking on Kijiji, you've been shopping those classifieds, you've been keeping your eye out. Now's the time to get serious. What do you need to look for? Okay, I don't buy heifers. I don't buy a cow that's not already been milked by someone else. We did that once. She broke my husband's hand. We're not willing to do that again. We buy cows that have already been milked by someone else. If you are going to hand milk, ideally, you buy a cow that's used to hand milking. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to train a cow into hand milking, which is fun and the first week sucks. Actually, a friend of mine just bought a milk cow from a dairy farm and she had like maybe a day or two of not fun and the cow was fine. So it depends. In our experience, the two cows we have bought from dairy farms, the first week or so, going from machine milking to hand milking, rough, but then it's fine. You're gonna wanna look for things like, so for me, I want a cow that's already had a calf before and she's already been milked. I want a cow that's bred and is confirmed bred by a vet or a test. Do not just trust, oh, we put them in a bull with a bull, we're pretty sure they're bred. You're counting on this once you bring that cow home, if you don't have access to bulls and AI, it's a lot more difficult for you to get that cow bred. You want that cow confirmed bred by a vet or a pregnancy test, like a blood test or a milk test. You want to see proof this cow is bred. I say this because I bought a cow from a dairy. Oh yeah, she's bred, we AI'd her and she never went back into heat. You're cool. Seven months later, I look at her, I'm like, you know, you're really not getting very fat. Maybe it was five, six months later. Either way, I was like, you're really not getting very fat, cow. So I got a vet out for pregnancy test. He's like, she's not pregnant. She has cysts on her ovaries and that is stopping her from cycling. So 
you to deal with those cysts, which wasn't a super big deal, and then get her bread. So, make sure they're bread. I actually, if you, this is the first time you're ever having a milking cow, it's almost easier for you to get a cow that is currently being milked and near the end of her lactation and bread because she's gonna be producing less milk and that is easier for you to learn on. You're not gonna drown in milk quite so much. When my cow freshened, she was giving six gallons a day of milk. Right now we're getting two and a half to three gallons a day. Six gallons a day of milk, you lose your mind many days trying to figure out what to do with all the milk. In Canada, it is illegal to sell raw milk for human consumption or any consumption really. You cannot sell milk, there is no legal way. Unless you own the cow, you can't get raw milk. So, we own our cow, my sister owns a portion of our cow, and my sister-in-law owns a portion of our cow. My sister milks and takes the milk. My sister-in-law helps us with other things to do with the cow, and she takes milk because her baby has formula made from the milk, just like our baby Rowan does. Other things you want to look for is the health history. Does this cow have a history of mastitis? If a cow has a history of mastitis or milk fever, which is milk fever is something they get right after they freshen and it's that big drastic draw of calcium, kills them basically. It can kill them. They'll go down and they won't want to get back up and you have to give them an IV of calcium. You can often have to give them antibiotics and it's blah da 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 and once they've had milk fever, if they are prone to it, they are forever prone to it. Jerseys are more known for being prone to milk fever, um, which is why people end up doing crosses quite often. Um, it's one of those things. What does her udder look like? A, are you wanting to hand milk? Make sure you, they don't got itty bitty titties because you can so many cows are being bred for shorter and shorter teats because they are cleaner and easier for the milking machine. If you are planning to machine milk forever and ever, amen, that doesn't matter so much. If you're wanting to hand milk, the teat size is important. Look at your hands. What is comfortable? Our cow has amazingly large teats. We've milked some cows that at the back one, you're like, like you end up milking like two or three fingers. Your fingers are like you're having a cup of tea. Look at the teats. Is her udder super saggy? That's not great either. That's more prone to udder injuries. Um, does she have a nice straight back or does she have a real sway back? Keep in mind dairy breeds always look on the skinnier side, but I'm not gonna get into a whole thing to do with body condition. There's some things like seeing their ribs is normal, but then there's other parts that shouldn't be skinny and all these different things you just need to give yourself a little Google and look at that. Production dairy cows are not meant to live a really long time. Um, so many of them are bred for just production and they're fed for production and they're just like doom, 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 until they just have a jammer from production, from just being pushed so hard. So how old are you willing to go in a cow? Like for me, like my cow is five or six years old and that's about as old as I would go buying a cow. We bought her last year. She'd had three calves and she came, she had just had her third calf. So that's like a reasonable, for me, you don't want a super old cow unless you're getting her for like a steal. I mean, there's that whole thing that like, okay, she's old, like your, your goal is to get a replacement out of her. How many chances are you gonna have to get a heifer out of her? And if I got a heifer out of her, that heifer is not gonna be milked until two years from now. So if I get a heifer out of her and then it's gonna be two years before I can milk that heifer, um, and then is she still gonna be milking then or am I gonna have a big gap? When, you know, like look at those sort of things as far as the longevity of milking a cow. You have finally bought your cow and she's ready to come home, and you are over the moon. Your first week is going to make you pull your hair out. You're gonna wonder why you ever thought this was a good idea. 
If it's me who convinced you to get a milk cow, you will be taking my name in vain. The first week, five days especially, is going to be all consuming milking a cow, taking care of this cow, dealing with milk, figuring this whole thing out. Clear your week. Make sure you don't have a super busy week the week you bring home your cow. Otherwise, you're just gonna wanna crawl into a hole. The, the realities of a 100% grass-fed cow are not great. First of all, 200 days a year we have to feed hay. Hay does not have the same nutrition for them to produce in the same way. Grass produces way more milk than hay does. There's also, lots of cows are simply not bred to produce without grain. They will continue producing, but it will be at their personal expense. They will get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier trying to keep up with producing milk. A little bit of grain can go a long way. And there's some people who are staunchly against feeding a cow grain, but look guys, I put a lot of time and effort into this milk cow. If I wanna feed her a gallon of barley a day, like she's a 1200 pound cow, and I'm gonna feed her five to 10 pounds of grain a day so that I can continue getting milk through winter. Otherwise, um, my cow, I'm actually thankful she won't produce to her own expense. She will just drop milk production if the nutrition is not there. So she's not producing at a detriment to herself, which is nice because when I lower grain, she will just lower production. She won't just keep producing more and more lots, but then get skinnier and skinnier. The dairy standard is to feed three pounds of grain, like a TMR, total mix ration, which has like protein and oils and fats and carbs and like it's like a fancy dairy mix three pounds of grain per gallon of production. Five pounds, so three pounds of TMR. Five pounds of grain is approximately a gallon bucket. So I feed in between five to 10 pounds of grain a day. Barley, black oil sunflower seeds, and alfalfa cubes or alfalfa pellets. Alfalfa cubes and pellets are technically a forage, like a grass, not a grain, so they don't really count in that amount. But my cow is producing about three-ish gallons a day and I'm feeding her five to 10 pounds of grain. I'm wanting her to gain some weight right now. If I was wanting her to up in production, I would be wanting to feed her protein. Soybeans, corn, um, I'd be feeding her a dairy ration, like a high protein dairy ration, and that would be boosting her production. Protein for production. Carbs, like barley and oats, actually oats can kind of boost production too, so no. Barley is a carb that goes more into their body and not into their milk production, which is why I primarily feed barley and then the alfalfa is also a protein, so that helps with milk production. And the black oil sunflower seeds is a protein and a fat, and that helps with overall condition and milk production and that. But my goal is not higher production, my goal is great body condition. There's a lot of mixed opinions on what you should feed, depending on where you live regionally. There's all sorts of different things like cotton, meal, there's like some byproduct there that doesn't grow here. Um, there's all sorts of different things that people feed. I don't really love feeding corn. Um, I don't have access to an organic dairy ration. Where we used to live, I could just buy an organic dairy ration. It was a no brainer to me. I would just feed that. That's not available here. I don't really like the other ration. A dairy ration is like a Tex, like a sweet feed. It's like pellets and flaked grains covered in molasses. She loves it but it's a ge full of genetically modified things and it's not my ideal thing. I did feed it to her for a bit, but now we've transitioned out of that and we're just on barley, boss, which is black oil sunflower seeds, and alfalfa. And I'm happy with that and she likes that. I did try feeding her peas, like ground peas, because I can get this feed from a local grower. It was barley, oats, and peas and she didn't like it. She wouldn't touch it. So, there you go. As far
far as the hay goes, there's all sorts of different grasses. And then there's also hay versus silage or haylage or chopped silage or all these different things. Hay is your round or your square bales. Silage is the stuff that's wrapped in plastic. Sometimes it's chopped, sometimes it's baled, sometimes it's grass, sometimes it's like um, brassicas, sometimes it's like a cereal crop, which is peas, oats, barley. Um, there's lots of different variations, and again, regionally, it's gonna depend on what you have available. For me, I can get hay or haylage, which is just hay silage, so it was too wet of a year for them to do normal hay, so they wrapped all their hay, or I can get a brassica silage, so peas, oats, barley. No, that's not, sorry, that's the cereal crop one, or I can get a brassica one that's like turnips, kale, oats. So due to, I asked a dairy farmer and he said get the haylage, get the straight grass haylage. Um, different things can flavor the milk. I was really hesitant to feed uh, brassicas because they're known for flavoring milk and there's different things that factor in there and he said that just the straight hay silage was my best bet. Silage has a little smell to it. I really like it. It's kind of a sweet smell. Some people don't like it. It's softer. It's wetter. It's easier for them to digest. It's more palatable to them. I think they produce better on it. Um, I feed silage whenever possible. Last time Mary's accidentally brought home hay instead of silage. It's fine. We have 10 acres of hay fields. We don't hay them ourselves. I have hay fever and I can't hay. And Mary's his work schedule doesn't really allow him to just take off days to hay. So we have a deal with a farmer that he hays the fields, he does it all, and we get a third of the hay. That combined with he also, get some pots down. He also leases some of our pastures for his cows and the payment for that is hay as well. So I was able to get all my hay for the year for my milk cow and my two calves just out of what he owed us and that was awesome. When you live somewhere where you have to feed hay and if you have to buy your hay up front, which is really common, first of all, where are you gonna put that hay? That's a huge thing. If it's silage, so we pick up the silage because it's not, it has to stay wrapped. It can only be unwrapped for about a month and we can't have it just unwrapped here. Sorry, they, it's not wrapped here because he wasn't gonna bring all his equipment to wrap it here. So we can bring back two of these bales, last us a few weeks or so. They're just a few minutes down the road. Mary just goes and picks it up and brings it home. Um, it means that our hay barn is empty this year pretty much. We have some square bales left from last year and they're kind of my emergency feed in case we can't get silage for some reason and we run out of what we have. There's a few different ways that people calculate. You can just look up online how much to feed my cow a day hay like and there's different charts based on like body weight are they milking are they pregnant how old or young and this things how cold is it all that sort of thing um a dairy number that i've heard for our area is that cow's weight in hay a month so our cow's approximately 1200 pounds so we need 1200 pounds of hay a month so um, here, round bales are either like the smaller round bales or like seven, 800 pounds and a big round bale is like 1200 pounds or like 1500 pounds would be huge. Um, so she's gonna eat a decent sized round bale every month. We get these big squares that are about 500 pounds dry matter. So they are heavier than that because they're silage and they're wet, but they're worth about 500 pounds dry matter. So she needs two and a half of those a month. Um, we kind of figured out our combined animal's weight and then went on the high side and it worked out that we need 10,000 pounds of hay for the winter, for 200 days. Where we live, an average hay price, unless you're like a huge buyer of hay, 
but like for your average small holder to buy hay, you're gonna pay about 10 cents a pound. So that 10,000 pounds is about $1,000 in hay for the year to feed our cows for 200 days. Our grain that we buy, the barley we can buy in bulk because we have a tractor so we can get those really big bags. Um, how big was the last one we got? I think it was 1,600 pounds. And I can't, I can't remember what it cost. My sister bought it and I just paid her back for half of it and I can't even remember what that is. From the other place we buy, it's like 18 cents a pound. Um, and I would buy a thousand pound bag, so it would be $180. And that thousand pounds, if I'm feeding her 10 pounds a day, is gonna last me over three months. So that one is not really expensive a month and it spreads out over a long time. Okay, I went to help the baby and I come back and we're already losing daylight here. I need to turn off the lights behind me. It's also snowing, so it's gotten really, the light's gotten really blue. So one thing that people do in order to not have to milk as much, because people are like, man, milking twice a day. First of all, yes, you have to do it every day and yes, you are tied to the farm, but I guarantee that you probably waste as much time, I waste as much time in a day as I do milking a cow. Like, it's easy to get sucked into an Instagram hole and that's about how long it takes me to milk a cow. I'm like 30, 45 minutes to feed, milk, clean up, all that jazz. So, right now I only do it once a day. So, a common thing is that you calf share. You separate the calf at night, it stays in a pen, you milk the cow in the morning, and then the cow and calf are together all day, and then you separate at night, milk in the morning, together all day. This works for a lot of people, this did not work for us. Uh, the cow just held back her milk. Cows have the amazing ability to hold back milk. And even if they don't hold back all the milk, the last milk to come out is the creamiest milk and they'll hold back that cream and then you don't get the cream. And if you're in it for the cream, the butter, the cheese, it's very disappointing. So we've tried calf sharing with two cows. Both times it blew up in our face. We tried for two months with this cow before we pulled the calf. And then we, we ended up, and her letdown was so bad, but her calf was so big that we could know we had to, she wouldn't let down for us. We had to keep the calf separate. And twice a day at milking time, the calf would nurse one side, we would milk the other side. And it worked until the calf got too big. And then it was a pain in our butt because the calf would be bunting that cow all over the place and we're trying to milk and it didn't work. So we pulled that calf and that calf got bottle fed and we got a new calf and we got like a little all Jersey bull calf because he would stay small for a long time. So we were able to use him. He was our letdown tool basically. And he nursed one side, I milked the other side. And, and then when he was 10 weeks old, I weaned down to one day, one time a day milking, which is a really common thing to do. And then he nursed until he was four months old. And that was just a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. And now I just milk once a day. The calves are all set, both of them are separate. Next milk cow we get, we will be, or next time this cow freshens, we will just be milking and bottle feeding the calf. We are not calf sharing. It does not work for us. Um, when they hold back their milk, it's just so frustrating and you can end up with mastitis and it's just not fun. Not fun. If calf sharing works for you, more power to you. I am jealous, it didn't work for us. There's a lot of differences in opinion on once a day milking and when you can go down to once a day milking and how you go down to once a day milking. When I went down to once a day milking with this cow, I just dropped a milking. I didn't feel like her production was high enough that it would matter. It didn't matter. It worked out fine. She went down a little bit in milk when we went to once a day milking, which is common, but we weren't really feeding her much grain then. We were only feeding her a couple pounds of grain. So we upped how much milk, how much grain we were giving her and we made back the milk production and we were just fine. 
we're getting two and a half to three gallons a day right now. Another important factor in cow health is giving them minerals. There's a good chance where you live, your feed store, you can get some sort of loose minerals, range minerals, cow minerals, something that's formulated for your area and what your area tends to lack. And you just give them free choice on these minerals. You just leave it out for us. We have it in a small box that's nailed to the wall in the barn and she can just help herself when she wants it and it just keeps their mineral levels and sometimes they eat a bunch and sometimes they barely eat any. So if you're wanting to get a milk cow because it's gonna save you money, stop right there and buy milk from the store. It's not gonna save you money. It takes a long time for it to save you money. But for us, multiple family members in our household can't really eat, including me, store-bought dairy, pasteurized dairy. It doesn't agree with us. Um, I feel really gross. I get so congested and I, I headaches and I just feel really gross if I eat pasteurized dairy. And I can eat all the raw dairy I want and breathe so clean and clear. The big push on why we got a milk cow when we did this year was because the baby. We needed milk for the baby. And the only way to have our own supply and to have a supply because of the laws where we live was to buy a milk cow. So we got a milk cow. So with our cow giving us three gallons of milk a day, people go, how do you go through that much milk? We barely go through a gallon of milk a week or two gallons of milk a week. Okay guys, the amount of milk it takes to make cheese and sour cream and butter and yogurt and all those things is more than you could imagine. One gallon of milk makes about a pound of cheese. A pound of cheddar, it's like that much. How fast does your family go through that much cheese? I'm gonna guess if you're a cheese eater, it's pretty quick. So realistically, it's more milk than you think to get what you want. The other thing is that ideally you need something like chickens or pigs as well when you have a milk cow. I know like what, you know, it's a addicting thing this farming. But when you make cheese, you have whey. And if you take four gallons of milk, yes, you're gonna get four or five pounds of cheese, but you're also gonna have four pounds of whey. And whey is an excellent thing to feed to chickens or pigs. And if you don't have chickens or pigs to feed to, it kind of feels really wasteful and you're just dumping it down the sink. So it's kind of like this whole everything works together sort of thing. Right now we have pigs. We do have some chickens, but we feed all of our whey to our pigs whey and also skim milk because sometimes I just want to make butter and I don't feel like making cheese. And so then the pigs just get skim milk. And what's really fun is that we have two friends that they bought piglets from the same litter of piglets. They fed the same feed and their pigs finished at the same weight, the goal weight of about 250 pounds live weight. The difference is they had their pigs one month longer than ours. The difference? So we got our pigs in April and in July we got a milking cow and they got skim or whey multiple times a week. A month, guys, a month. That's pretty, pretty dang cool. I hope this answered a bunch of your questions about choosing a milk cow and feeding a milk cow. The next video is all about what do I need to milk my cow when I hand milk my cow and my milking setup and that sort of thing. And then there's a video on how to actually like, how do we get the milk out of the cow? washing her udder, that sort of thing. And then the last video is all about straining the milk, how to catch mastitis early before it actually becomes mastitis when it's still blocked ducts. Um, how do we store milk? How does it last? What do we do with all this milk? That's the last video. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you will tune into the next videos and have a lovely day, folks.